Great Lent, 1995, March 6th on the old calendar, and then 19th on the new. And I'm not a person that cares about anniversaries, really, birthdays and stuff like that. I never pay attention. But I've been really thinking about this for quite some time, actually. I always knew that the priesthood would be hard. Before I became a priest, I knew it would be hard. I had no romantic notions about it. I was already an older man. I was 36. And I knew it would be difficult. I haven't been surprised at how hard certain, certain things about the priesthood have been. The activity level, the tiredness that you get, the sense of loss when people don't do well. I knew all that was going to happen. Times when I'd feel out of my element, not knowing what to do. I knew all that was going to happen. But I didn't realize how hard it is for a sinner to be a priest. St. Cosme St. Delos talked about a priest that he's above an angel, and yet he's also a man. So he's higher than an angel because he can celebrate the holy mysteries. Nobody else can do that. And he's lower than an angel because, of course, he's a sinful man. Things that in my priesthood that I had trouble enduring are indifference, and willful ignorance, and meanness, and thoughts. Didn't realize how when things go on and on and on, how difficult it is to deal with thoughts, with negative thoughts, with cynical thoughts. Very difficult. I thought about that thought experiment that people sometimes do. If I had it to do over again, I know I'd do it over again. But I also know I don't want to do it. And yet I do want to do it. Maybe that doesn't make much sense to you, but it makes a lot of sense to me. The priesthood is the most awesome and beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. And the most terrible thing, also. There have been losses because of the priesthood. There have been difficulties because of the priesthood. I've learned a lot more about stuff that I wouldn't have known if I wasn't a priest. Some of it is very beautiful. Some of it's very terrible. So that I didn't understand when I came into the priesthood, how sometimes you'll just be pushed past you. You're always pushed past your abilities. That was okay with me. It still is. Because, of course, God is the one that is accomplishing everything. But besides being past my abilities, sometimes I was past my endurance. Now I have the icon of St. Gregory Palamas, obviously, because he's been my protector throughout all these years, as I was ordained on his day. I have a working definition priesthood. And that is basically a priest is a sinner helping other sinners not to sin. That's it. And you got to have fire in your belly. Those who know me will never accuse me that I don't have fire in my belly. I'm a sinner, but I have fire in my belly. If you don't have fire in your belly, don't be a priest. It doesn't matter how much you know about theology. Doesn't matter how much you know the service, how good a preacher you are. If you don't have fire in your belly, don't be a priest. Because you're not cut out for the job. The best advice I ever heard, I received for the priesthood, was years ago in a conference for priests. Uh, I think it was during Great Lent. And Metropolitan, the town, was preaching. Just to the priests. That's all there were in the room. And he told us that when someone comes into the church, you have to pray that God would give them a living altar. And you have to pray with your blood. And he said the candle signifies that. When a candle is burning, it's like your blood is being given out to people. And that when you come to any service, doesn't matter what it is, liturgy, matins, maleben, panahita, that you pray for everyone in the room, that they would receive what they need. 
You won't know what to do. God knows. And that you pray with your blood. And I've taken that as my pattern for the priesthood. You pray with your blood. You pray for those around you. That in the liturgy, the most important thing you do as a priest is pray, and not the prayers that are said aloud, the inner prayers, the groanings. You sort of wrap your arms around everyone, sort of a noetic way, encompass everyone around you, and other people that are out there besides. And pray that God will give them God. That's the priesthood. And I have boldness that God hears those prayers. God has kept from me really knowledge of whether a particular prayer for a particular person is the reason why this particular thing has happened. Because of my pride, because of my sins, I don't, I don't know any of those things. But I do know that God hears the prayers of his priests. And I'm one of them. Therefore, when I pray before the altar, insistently, sort of like Abraham bargaining, God hears. I don't have evidence in terms of concrete that it was that prayer that did it, but I know that God hears my prayer when I pray as a priest. Of course, I'm always a priest, but when I kneel and I pray before the altar. And that is a great consolation that only a priest can know, that you can stand before the altar and you can have in your heart someone. And your heart is burning with God for them. Only a priest knows that. And it's a, it's a great gift. But gifts are not free. This gift comes with a price. And I pay some of that price. And I've done it gladly, but with difficulty. And that's why I say, if I had it to do over again, I would do it. But I wouldn't want to. There's a piece of me I wouldn't want to. Mainly because of the suffering that my family has endured. The difficulties my family has had. It's not easy to live as a priest. Especially someone like me who doesn't multitask well. Who gets distracted by uh, difficulties. Doesn't always say what he's feeling. It's not easy. I've thought about this for a long time, and I think I have a personality that is very suited to being a priest and very unsuited to being a priest. I am what I am, just like Popeye. And regardless of my sins, I'm a priest of God. And I stand before the altar and I insist that people will be helped. And I say to the Lord, bring down thy Holy Spirit, and he does. I've got a lot to do there except that he tells me I have that power. That is being higher than an angel. And it's also, by the way, being equivalent to St. John Chrysostom, to St. John Kronstadt, St. Ignatius of Pentapolis, any priest, whether he be a bishop or a priest of the priestly rank, it's the same. My mysteries are equivalent to the mysteries of St. John of Kronstadt. There's no difference. They're not holier. They're not less holy. Because they are God. And God gives of himself, his whole self, to everyone, every time. But the difference between me and St. John of Kronstadt is that he prayed with fire. With an insistence that I don't know yet how to, to, to do. And when he prayed in that way, God heard. So I'm hoping that my next 20 years I learn how to pray like that. The most important thing in the priesthood is to pray. It's good to have abilities in the priesthood. It's good to be a good preacher, a good counselor, to have some intuition, to have some uh, understanding of human nature and people. It's, it's really good to be organized. I've suffered without a good organization for a long time. It's slowly gotten better. It's good to have a calm personality. Sort of doesn't go too high or too low. All those things are good. But the most important thing as a priest is that you pray. Because God hears the prayers of his priests. That's your job as a priest, is to pray. 
and in love. Of course, if you love, you'll pray. So really, to say that you pray means that you love. To say that you love means that you pray. The thing that I've learned most in my 20 years of being a priest is it's all about prayer. And I didn't know how to pray when I was first a priest. I prayed, but I didn't understand that you had to sign. And that that sign, it has a price. It has a effect on you. But if you sigh with fire, God will protect you from that effect. And God will hear your prayers because you're a priest. Sometimes there are so many needs that I encounter as a priest. In the services, I pray for individuals. And I even have a list of people that I especially care about that have special needs that I mention twice at various points of the Divine Mary. But mostly, I just say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on everybody. And I believe that God hears them. I told you one regret I had as a priest, and that is that I wasn't there enough for my family. My family says, hope that God will compensate with prayer for the things that I went through because I wasn't always there. I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Stuff is hard. And I didn't always do well. Another regret I have as a priest is my dad. My dad taught me a lot about the priesthood. He didn't know it. Because he was a man upstairs kind of guy. He was believed in the man upstairs. And wasn't really particularly Christian in the way that he just sort of gave lip service to God. But he was an honest man, an ethical man. He really taught me a lot about goodness and about, about ethics and about doing the right thing. It's always right to do the right thing. But when I was ordained, he didn't come to any of my services. It wasn't important to him. He didn't really reject it. It was like, fine, that I did it. But he wasn't interested. He also was sick very near to the time that I was ordained. It turned out that he had cancer about a year and a half later and, and, and uh, died relatively, relatively quickly after he had cancer. But I regret that he didn't see me in service praying because that's... I always wanted to say to my dad, this is the fruit of, of what you've taught me. It's not exactly what you do, what you believe, but this is why I'm here. You're, you're the reason I'm here. I can remember times when I was, after he died, uh, I didn't know how to pray well when I died, back, way back when. Now I know how to pray poorly. Before I prayed worse than poorly. And in the liturgy, at certain points, I would look out at the, sort of at the high place, and would uh, talk to him. No, I didn't hear his voice. And I just, uh, I would say, Dad, I wish you could see me. I hope you can see me. And so I prayed for him. That's a regret that I didn't, uh, my dad didn't see me so much. And I have a regret also, but I'm doing something about that regret is uh, that I don't, I didn't learn to pray for a long time. I didn't see what was really the most important about priesthood. It wasn't the activity. It wasn't going everywhere and doing everything and, and uh, being the first one in and the last one out and doing anything that had to be done. It wasn't all about that. I mean, you have to do those things as a priest. It's just the way it goes. But that's not what it's about. What it's about is loving your flock and then praying for them in your life with assistance, with perseverance. That's the most important thing. And I really learned that later in my priesthood. Of course, now I can say later, 20 years. 20 years of prayer. But I feel like this barely started and it was really important. 
barely started to learn that the most important thing is to encompass my flock with my arm and to pray for them with longing, with sighing, with growing, as the scripture talks about, and with insistence. And that's the most important thing. And then everything else just take, takes care of itself. I believe that with all my heart. So, on my 20th anniversary of the priesthood, I ask you prayers for the simple priest seraphim. I ask you also to understand that, that it's a difficult role for priests. Pray for them. And uh, be kind to them. That's very important. May God help us to reach 